So in terms of support for theological education, we're asking for some student support. It still costs, there is tuition costs, right? And uh, support for the, and, to, and travel to get to, to get to the places that the studying is taking place. If you're studying in Saskatchewan, you have to come down from a northern community to come to Prince Albert. There aren't roads everywhere, so it's costly. So we're asking for support for the educational institutions and to do the extra leadership training as well. So there's all the centers. So in the Yukon we have the School for Ministry, Bishop School for Ministry, Brandon has the Henry Bud College for Ministry, there's the Moosonee Training School, Arctic is the Arthur Turner Training School, Saskatchewan is the James T. College of Ministry, and Kuwaitan is the Dr. William Winter School for Ministry. So the third mark of mission is to respond to human need by loving service. And like your parish, as I'm assuming this happens here, the people in the Anglican Northern parishes respond to what's going on within their own communities. Um, the woman on the far there, and there, she is from Fort Nelson, British Columbia, in the Diocese of Caledonia. She holds a weekly soup kitchen for the itinerant folks that come through because there's lots of people who are coming through because of job, looking, trying to get jobs and stuff. So she, she does this. This is her ministry. She holds a, a soup kitchen. Um, so down at the bottom here, kitty corner to that one, is a group of uh, from the Archdeaconry of Labrador who gathered for the Sisters in the Spirit uh, event to remember the murdering, murdered and missing Aboriginal women across Canada. Because it's again, it's an issue within Labrador because a lot of the Inuit women get caught up in prostitution and stuff just like they do the Cree folks do in the rest of the country. This is our big area in terms of responding to human need. And that's the suicide prevention program. In 2008, the church from coast to coast to coast sang Amazing Grace. It all got videotaped, it got put up online, it was a, turned into a fantastic event. I know the Diocese of Ottawa, there were many parishes that did this. I don't know all of them, but I do know that many did this. It raised about $90,000 for the Council of the North. In November 2009, Cynthia Patterson was uh, hired as the program coordinator. Already we have leaders in lay, lay folk in the Diocese of Moosonee who are being trained in, in their communities uh, to be suicide prevention workers. Um, just to give you a few facts, suicide is an epidemic across the north. Our rates are anywhere from 10 to 20 times what they are in southern Canada. We're talking about clergy who are burying young people as young as 9 and up, up to 25, burying a young person like that at least once a month who's killed themselves. This is an after effect of residential schools, folks, and the loss of culture and loss of language. And I am really, really thankful that the church has been able to say, we can step up and do something about this. The program that they're using in Moosonee and will soon be used in Northern Ontario is uh, called River of Life. It's from, the, uh, from Calgary and it's an Aboriginal based suicide prevention program. Diocese of the Arctic is going to use something different because it comes out of a First Na the it's more First Nations that's coming out of Calgary. They need something that's more in Inuit based, and so they're looking to see what they can take from the River of Life program and adapt for their own culture. It is with with those gifts that the program is going to continue because we can't do the fundraising from within the Council of the North for for that. 